Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to explore an interesting byproduct of the electric field and the Gauss's law. What that is, is the concept of nuclear fusion and what causes it in the first place. In order for nuclear fusion to occur, which by the way is the combination of small nuclei into a bigger nuclei, here we have an example. We have a single proton being combined with another proton. So we have a proton here, another proton on approach to this proton. Typically, they probably both will travel towards one another, but we'll just keep it simple here. And the idea is that this proton has to approach the other proton close enough so that the nuclear strong force can hold them together. Otherwise, the repulsive forces between the two protons will be so enormous that they simply get closed, but then it'll they get pushed away from each other by that enormous repulsive force before the nuclear strong force can hold them together. The nuclear strong force only acts at a very small distance, so they have to get close enough for the nuclear strong force to combine them. Once it does, one of the protons will then convert into a neutron by expelling a beta particle, which is basically the antiparticle of the electron, a positive electron or called a positron, and also an electron neutrino that carries off part of the energy. And that then holds together and is now called a deuteron because now the proton is being converted to a neutron and is basically heavy hydrogen. It's still a hydrogen atom with a neutron now. So what we're going to do here is calculate the electric field right around the nucleus of a hydrogen atom, which is basically a proton. So we realize that the radius of a proton is roughly 1.2 femtometers, which is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 15 meters. And so we assume then that the Gaussian surface is right at that radius, and we're going to calculate the electric field at that location. And then we're going to calculate the force that will exist between two protons at that small a distance. And from that point, we'll see, well, why the protons have to travel so fast before nuclear fusion can occur. So we know that we have E times A is equal to the Q inside divided by epsilon sub naught. Now, actually what I need to do is adjust that a little bit because notice for the two protons to be this close together you basically are talking about two radii so the Gaussian surface basically should be uh, twice that number so let's go so one half the radius of the Gaussian surface is that so the radius of the Gaussian surface must actually be two times 1.2 femtometer which is 2.4 femtometer because that's as close as two protons can get. So yes, I did have to make that adjustment. Uh, let's see here. So we then have the electric field is equal to Q inside divided by the area divided by epsilon sub naught. And of course the area would be the surface area that would be the Gaussian surface if you want to think about it that way. So this is equal to Q inside divided by 4 pi radius, that would be the Gaussian radius uh, squared, so that would be the area times epsilon sub naught. So let's find out how strong or how powerful that electric field is. So E is equal to Q inside, that's the charge of a single proton, that would be this many coulombs divided by 4 pi times the radius, so now we realize it's going to be 2.4 times 10 to the minus 12, oh, not 12, femtometers minus 15 meters, we have to square that, times the epsilon sub naught, which is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12, that's to the minus 12, that would be Coulomb squared divided by Newton meter squared. All right, so let's get a calculator out and figure out how strong that electric field is. What's the magnitude of a field like that? 1.6 e to the 19 minus divided by 4 divided by pi and divided by 2.4 e to the 15 minus squared and then divide by oh let me do this again because I pushed the wrong button. All right 1.6 e to equals wow 2.5 times 10 to the 20th. So the electric field at that spot, when two protons are close enough together so they can be joined into a deuteron, the electric field at that point would be 2.5 times 10 
to the 20th newtons per coulomb. Wow. I've never calculated this before. That is quite amazing. 2.5 times 10 to the 20 newtons per coulomb. So now what we can do is calculate the force between those two protons when they're at that distance apart. So now we can use Coulomb's law where, where we can say that the force experienced is going to be equal to the charge times the electric field at that location. So the force experienced when the second proton is at that location relative to the first proton and so experiencing that electric field right there so the force is going to be equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs multiplied times electric field of 2.5 times 10 to the 20th newtons per coulomb notice the coulombs cancel out and we have a force equal to times 1.6 e to the 19 minus equals Wow, a force of about 40 newtons. Now, since a newton can be converted to pounds, we know that uh, one pound is a force equivalent to about 4.448 newtons. I believe that's correct. If I remember right, then we can say that uh, the force is going to be equal to, divide that by 4.448 equals, that's roughly 9 pounds of force. Imagine that. For two protons to be pushed close enough together for them to be able to fuse together in a nuclear fusion process turning two protons into a deuteron, you have to have a force of nine pounds pushing those two little protons together. That's absolutely enormous. Now of course nobody sits there and pushes two protons together like that. That would be impossible but that's accomplished by having the two protons move fast enough towards one another with such an enormous velocity that before they can get repelled, they get close enough to the nuclear strong force to take over. But basically, they need to overcome this enormous force for them to be able to fuse into deuteron. So now you have it. By using the concept of Gaussian surface and Coulomb's law and the concept of electric fields and the forces created by those electric fields, now we realize how much force is involved in combining and fusing two protons together. And that's how we know.